All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, I've been told the jury has reached a verdict. I have no idea what it is. What uh, we will do is we'll bring the jurors in. Juror number one is our four person. I'm going to have her uh, switch seats with juror number three so she'll be near the microphone to make the announcement. Uh, I will have the jurors uh, tender the verdict forms to me. I'm going to review those before they're announced just to make sure they have been completed and signed. And then I'll return those to our four person for publication. Uh, now, I just want to prepare everybody. Everybody's behaved really well during this very difficult trial, and I appreciate that. Uh, and I don't expect there's going to be any uh, displays of emotion from anybody. Uh, the only reason I bring it up is because you actually have to take a step to affirmatively make yourself not have that reaction. It's, it's a powerful thing when we receive a verdict. And if you're not thinking consciously about, I need to make sure I don't display any emotion, um, then it's just natural that you're going to do that. And as I said, I have no idea what the verdict's going to be. Uh, some folks may be happy with it. Some folks may be disappointed in it. I don't really know. But this jury has worked hard. Uh, they've made a lot of sacrifices over the last really week and a half uh, to be here uh, in this situation. And so I just want to make sure that we respect them. Whatever the verdict is, everybody just needs to remain calm and not have any uh, outward uh, displays of emotion. There will be a, an appropriate time for that to happen because I know it's just natural. And so you've, everybody's behaved really well. The only reason I bring it up again is just so you prepare yourself because it's an awesome thing to uh, receive a verdict. Is the state ready to receive the verdict? The defense ready? Yeah. All right. Please bring our jury in. Folks, please rise for our jury. All right, everyone, you may be seated. Does the state weigh the call, jury? Yes. Defense weigh the call? Yes. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Madam Foreperson, I understand the jury has reached a unanimous verdict in all seven counts. Is that correct? Yes. If you please hand the book to Officer Coker, let me take a quick look at that, and then I'll return it to you. All right, let the record reflect the court sees that all seven verdict forms have been completed and signed by our four person. Uh, Officer Coe, if you please return that to our four person. And Madam Four Person, I'm going to ask if you please stand up. And I would ask you to take a couple steps to your left so we are near the microphone. And I'm going to have you publish the jury's findings. I'd like you to turn to the verdict form for the first count. And if you please announce your findings by reading the sentence, we, the jury, find the defendant, and then announce your findings. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of first-degree premeditated murder of Joel Guy, Sr. Count number two, please. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of first-degree premeditated murder of Lisa Guy. Count number three. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of first-degree felony murder of Lisa Guy. Count number four. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of first-degree felony murder of Joel Guy, Sr. Count number five. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of felony murder of Lisa Guy. Count number six. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of abuse of a corpse of Joel Guy, Sr. And count number seven. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of abuse of a corpse of Lisa Guy. Thank you, Madam Four Person. If you please return that to Officer Coker for the record. You may have a seat. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if that's your individual verdict as to each count, please signify by raising your right hand. All right, let the record reflect the court sees all 12 hands. Does either side wish any further polling? All right, folks, that concludes your service to this community. In this case, I'm very appreciative of the sacrifices that each one of you have made uh, by being here really going back to last week. Uh, I know this has been a difficult uh, trial for you, but thank you so much for your service to our community and for making our constitutions work. 
I have one bit of um, uh, legal issues I have to address with the attorneys, but I would like to thank each of you with a certificate of appreciation for your service. So if you don't mind waiting for me for just a couple more minutes, at this time you are discharged. Please go with the officers. I'll see you in the jury room. All right, Mr. Guy, if you remain, remain standing, anyone else, you may have a seat. Joel Michael Guy and Doctor number 110145, after being tried by Virginia Peers and found guilty of all seven counts, the court does enter those findings. I exercise my role as a 13th juror as well and do find that the weight of the evidence supports the jury's findings. You can have a seat now, sir. All right, folks, uh, by operation of law, the court is required to pronounce the sentence uh, in the first-degree murder counts, uh, and I believe we're going to have some victim impact today. Is that correct, Joan? Um, the family would like a few minutes before to collect their thoughts before we yes. do that, if that's okay. I, I do need to take a recess anyway to discharge the jury and give them some instructions about the media contact, uh, but uh, I will do that. When we can come back, we will hear victim impact testimony. After that, I will uh, pronounce sentence on the first degree uh, murder counts. We will need to have a separate sentencing hearing uh, to determine consecutive versus concurrent and also determine the appropriate sentence in counts six and seven, abuse of a corpse. Uh, so we'll take a, uh, is 10 minutes enough time? I will right, we'll take a 10 minute recess and come back and begin with victim impact. I'll rule your objection, but I do um, uh, direct the family. The purpose of victim impact uh, testimony is to assist the court in, in sentencing by hearing from the victims on how this has impacted you and your family. So I would ask you to direct your comments toward me in that particular area. All right, John, if you please call your first person. Sir, just again by stating your name, your relationship to the victims, and then tell me how this impacted you. Yes, sir. My name's Alvin Madera Jr. I'm the oldest brother of Lisa Guy and brother-in-law of Joe Guy. Uh, proceed. Uh, it's with heavy heart and tormented spirit that I make the statement to the members of, the, of this court. I'm many things. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm a husband. I'm a brother. I'm an uncle and I'm a son. I have. I've been blessed to see many wonderful things on this earth. I watched my stepson grow to become a man. I've been there for my grandchildren. I watched them grow to become little people. Your parents cannot do these things, Joe Michael, if because of the, the crime you've committed. My sister Lisa Guy was truly one of the most loving, caring, and forgiving people on the face of this earth. Her husband, my brother-in-law, Joe Guy Sr. was honestly one of the most down-to-earth, hard-working, and kind people I ever met. They were the type of people who would help anyone out whenever they could. My sister was the type of person who loved, who loved deeply. She loved the family. She loved the mother. She loved the father, her sister, and I. Her husband, she loved her children and stepchildren. She loved the grandchildren. Her love was taken. It was taken from this world by, by murder. My sister and brother-in-law loved family. They enjoyed holidays. Some of my favorite memories I have of, of her and him were from holidays. We could sit around and tell fun and interesting stories. My brother-in-law was an amazing storyteller, and our family holidays were never, will never be the same without them there. Lisa and Joe were murdered. They were butchered. Their bodies were desecrated. Their spirits were forever harmed. The loss of my family members will forever be internal. I stand for them in their, st in their statement. Days after of hearing of Joe and Lisa's murder, my mother was hospitalized. She never exited, exited the hospital. The loss of your child was difficult for her. One that I hope I never have to endure. But to find out your daughter was murdered by your own grandchild was heartbreaking. Lillery, 
we not even, she could not even attend his, uh, the funeral. She was unable to say her final prayers. She was, un she was Catholic. She was unable to take communion at her daughter's funeral. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the next day after we buried Joel and, Joel and Lisa, uh, my mother died. They fought to bring her back. She truly died of a broken heart. There were three deaths on your hand, on Joe Michael Guy Jr.'s hands. My grandchildren lost their great grandmother. My stepson lost his grandmother, and I lost my mother. On that day, I lost my family. My mother is gone. My sister is gone. The world has forever changed. The impact of this crime is notorious. My grandchildren's grandchildren will be able to read about this horrible, disgusting crime. We will never, ever be the same. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Robin White. No, I know your name, but just for the record, if you'd state it again and your relationship to the Robin law. White and uh, Joel Sr. was my brother. Lisa was like my sister. And I waited a long time for this, four years now. Took away my brother and my sister Lisa, the two precious people he's took from my family and me. It was a heartless and selfish thing. I will never get to see or talk to him or be a part of my brother and my sister's life no more. The night I heard about this, I knew who done it, because in my heart I did. And uh, Mike and Lisa, I called him my brother Mike. I didn't call him Joel. He was, he was so fun. And Lisa, I done a lot with him. We was together a lot, and I missed that. Now that's gone. I'll never get that back. And there, and he was so proud to have his grandchildren. And they missed their papa. He won't get to watch them grow up. Him or Lisa, either one now. And their daughters, they won't get to see their father and the woman that they looked up to a mom ever again. And I'll never have my brother with me again. That's a. So, but justice has prevailed today, and I am so thankful for that. I had a lot of stuff wrote, but I ain't going to say all of it. So I just want to thank everybody here for what they've done, the job they've done, and you, Your Honor. Thank you, and to everybody here. I appreciate it. And I better just shut up now and go home back. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. White. I'm sorry for your loss. Chanda Spink. If you could just say your name and your relationship to the loss, please. Chanda Spink. Um, Joel Guy was my dad, and Lisa was my stepmom. They, um, I don't have a statement ready, so I'm just speaking from the heart. But want to first of all, just so I don't forget, say thank you to all the law enforcement and the lawyers, the court, the jury, everyone that had to see all this. And then I'm very sorry that this evil's had to come into their life too. And that I will be praying for all of them as I do for my family as well. Dad and Lisa were wonderful. They were larger than life. They were so happy. They were such really good people. And they loved him. They loved him so much. They loved all of us. And for anyone to do what he did, I don't understand it. 
He has taken something from myself, from my children, his dad and Lisa's grandchildren, my husband, our fa everyone in our family. He has taken something from us that we'll never get back. We will. I pray that we can move on from this and that we can put this behind us. I pray that that my children are not going to be scarred for life from this. The tears that's come from them, the nightmares. I'm so thankful for today. I'm thankful that this day is done. And I'm so thankful that the jury decided guilty on all counts. And I'm thankful for you giving me the opportunity to speak today. Angela Crane. If you begin by stating your name and your relationship. Thank you, Your Honor. My name is Angela Crane, and Joel and Lisa Guy were my parents. Um, I wasn't prepared to speak today. Um, it's like for four years, I felt like I've pushed it down, like it's not actually happening. But it's real. And they're gone. And Dad was my best friend. And I'll never get to hear his laugh again. Or his just incredible hugs. Um, I'll never get to sit and banter with him and hear the same stories we've all heard over and over, but they're still just as hilarious because Dad was such a storyteller. I'll never get to go fishing with him or, or what he likes to say, have a cocktail. Or it's five o'clock somewhere. I've, I was robbed of having my father walk me down the aisle. And Lisa, my last mother on earth, was taken away. She was the most loving and giver, giving person I've ever met. She would give the shirt off her back to anyone, the last dying to anyone. And she, she was my best friend, too. They were both robbed of seeing their grandchildren, their handsome boys, grow up and turn into incredible men. And to, for them to have to go through this tragedy so young is just, it's heartbreaking. I still, I still have dad on speed dial. Like, it hurts me every day not to be able to speak to him. The rest of my life is not going to be the same for any of us. Now I know there's a void that will not be replaced until that beautiful day when we meet again. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Ms. Tyler, if you'd begin by stating your name and your relationship, please. Yes, I am. Um, my name is Michelle Tyler, and my relationship is I am Joel and Lisa's daughter. I'm going to have to put this mask on because... That mask is mother's. That's fine. That's all right. Um, first, I would like to say that I don't know if you all have a hero, but I have. Ms. Tyler, I'm going to give you permission um, to take the, the screen off. There's nobody within six feet. Thank you. you. I'm just having a hard time hearing you. Just, I think it's appropriate to make an exception in this case. Go ahead. Thank you. I don't know if you all have a hero. But I, I have heroes, and it's such an awful situation to even have to have heroes. But I thank all of you all sitting here and everyone back there that are still here for five days and seven days, and you've been here every time. Every single one of you are my hero. 
As a little girl, I watched how much Lisa loved Joel Michael. I wanted to be that mom. Joel Michael was Lisa's entire world. Most girls dream of weddings, I think. I don't know. But I dreamed of being Lisa with the picture-perfect family, with the dad coming home at five and me having dinner. I wanted to love as strong as Lisa loved. The dinner at dad's and Lisa's home included me, which was so different. We, we would stay there in the summer, but we were at my mom. My dad lived like six hours or hours away, and so my, we stayed at my mom's. Um, included me, which was so different at my house where we grew up poor, and it was just pasta. So when we went to that house, it was like meat and candy and um, they provided a loving and caring home with all the extra stuff. Some of this I have to, I can't read that sentence either. My dreams were to spend the next 40 years at Thanksgiving and Christmas laughing with my parents. My dreams were to move Lisa and dad into my home. I would even banter with them about them moving into my home when they were old to model for my kids how to take care of your parents in the last days because I'm moving in with my kids when I get old. But I wanted them to see that like I got to see my mom take care of her parents. I got to see my mom stand by her her parents' um, bed when they died. And I wanted that. My dream was to hold my mom's, Lisa's hand as she took her last breath. My dream was to hold my dad's hand as he took his last breath. People take moments like that for granted, but I wanted those moments with my whole soul. Not only that, the kid's childhood was taken away. I am angry for my dreams being destroyed, but, I, but I'm not the only one that's been affected. This has impacted my kids, and for that, I will never be able to forgive. I rest easy knowing that God is okay with my choice not to, to forgive someone that has murdered my parents. I had to spend the last four years saving my kid's soul, their spirits, in their hearts. I have spent the last four years cleaning up a mess. No one will ever know what it's like to have to be a child having to hear that your grandmother's head was cooking in a pot because you, because the the person that did it had the perfect childhood. He, especially not a man with that childhood. And on a super selfish note, you will never know, not meaning you, like meaning um, what it is like to have to tell your ch their, your children that their grandparents have been chopped up and put in acid. Can the boys ever, can my kids ever trust again? Would I ever really be able to trust again? I was always so proud of Lisa, and I told everyone that she was the best stay-at-home mom. I mourn for my dad, and know I, I keep talking about Lisa. <laughs> I mourn terribly for my dad, I do, but I grieve and rage for Lisa. I rage for her from the mother's point of view. I cry for her because I wonder if when she realized the love of her life, the only son she had, the child that she gave her entire life to was about to murder her. I have to edit that. Stop right there. I wonder if at that moment when her heart was broken, did she even fight? Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Anyone else? Anyone else? There will be an additional time for victim impact statements should anyone choose to make it um, when we come back for entry of judgment. Does anybody else need to address the court today? All right. Thank you, folks. So uh, I do receive the victim impact testimony from the family uh, as a judge. Uh, I'm required to make sentences based upon the law and the evidence in the case. Uh, your emotion is uh, completely understandable and your pain is completely understandable. Uh, as a judge, that cannot have any influence on the decision that I make. Uh, but I'm also a human being, uh, so I want you to know that you do have my sympathy. I know this has been very difficult. Um, if I weren't the judge and I were a friend, I would spend a lot of time sitting down and talk to you, uh, but I am the judge, so it would be inappropriate for me to be your counselor. Uh, the one thing I will say uh, to the family is several of you have expressed um, 
how your faith has played a role in how you're dealing with this. Uh, so in your faith tradition, you can read in Romans 5 where Scripture says, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. And so it's my prayer to you that you will find the God's abounding grace to help you get through this. But you do have my sympathy. At, that, at this point, though, that sympathy has to end, and I have to make legal determinations. So I, I hope you understand when I pronounce sentence in this case, it's not a value judgment on the life of Joel and Lisa Guy. It's a judgment upon, uh, based upon the facts of this case and the law. All right. So we do need to set a sentencing date before we enter the sentences on the first-degree murder case. We need to get a pre-sentence investigation uh, report conducted. Uh, that takes about 45 days. Today is October 2nd, so that would put us somewhere in the neighborhood of November 13th uh, or the 19th. I guess I would, if the defense will weigh the 45 days, I would suggest probably November 19th. 19th? Yes, Is that good? General, is that okay for the state? All right, so we'll set sentencing date for November 19th. Since we do have uh, verdicts on first-degree murder, the court is required by law to uh, go ahead and uh, enter those sentences or at least pronounce those sentences. I won't be able to enter judgment because we have to know if there will be consecutive sentences in this case, and we'll also need to pronounce the sentence on the abuse of a corpse on the November 19th day. But at this time, Mr. Guy, I'm going to ask you to please stand. Joel Michael Guy and docket number 110145, after being tried by a jury of peers, uh, the first degree premeditated murder of Joel Michael Guy, the court now sentences you to life in prison in the Tennessee Department of Corrections. Count number two, after being found guilty by a jury of peers of the first degree premeditated murder of Lisa Guy, I now enter sentence of life in prison uh, in the Tennessee Department of Corrections. Count number three is a first-degree felony murder during the perpetration of first-degree premeditated murder of Lisa Guy. The court now sends you to life in prison uh, in that count uh, to run or to merge into count number two. Count number four is uh, first-degree felony murder during the perpetration of theft of Joel Guy Sr. The court sends you to life in prison in Tennessee Department of Corrections. That will merge into count number one. Count number five is the first-degree felony murder during the perpetration of theft of Lisa Guy, the court sends you to life in prison. That will merge with count number two. That will be the court sentence. The court stands adjourned.